Hello and welcome to my video. Um, my name is Tim and I'm guessing if you found your way here then you're interested or at least curious about uh, a different way to make drum triggers, uh, specifically for use with the Drumit 5 Mark II drum module. Well, a bit of a history first of all. I, I, I've, I've did own the very first uh, Drumit 5 Mark I module and kit, the orange one, as you can see here, that was about seven years ago. And it was a fantastic kit, the triggering was fantastic, the sounds are really good, um, and you do also have the opportunity to load your own sounds onto the module, unlike many other modules at that time. But it was undeniably a bit orange, uh, looked a bit garish, maybe not the sort of thing everybody would want to be playing on stage. Um, I'd always played acoustic drums until this point and, and I did have a small acoustic kit which I uh, used and thought why don't I have a go at trying to convert this, um, making some triggers so I could actually play the acoustic kit but through the electronic module. So, as you do in these situations, you scoured the internet, looked at, looked at lots of drum forums, lots of videos, and the, the method that was recommended by everybody virtually was to make some sort of arrangement where you have a, a foam cone sitting on top of a gear, so, uh, which touches the underside of a mesh drum head and use this to get the signal. So, being a practical sort of person, I, I uh, went ahead with this method, um, got the bits and pieces. Admittedly, I didn't use proprietary foam cones. I did make my own out of some foam sanding blocks, as was the recommendation. They looked okay. They seemed to squash down reasonably, but they just did not work for me with that particular module. So I was a bit disappointed and decided to have a look at the, at the orange two box kit and see what method they were using to get such fantastic triggering. And in actual fact, the method used by two box is, is completely different. It's, it's sort of virtually the opposite approach in that the, the brass side of the piezo actually touches the drum head and it looked fairly straightforward so I decided to have a go, made my own triggers using this method and lo and behold it was absolutely fantastic, a revelation that the, the triggering was great, very, very reliable, excellent um, isolation from other drums. <coughs> so that went on, for one reason or another I didn't keep that kit forever and sold it a few years ago but last year with lockdown I really was itching to do another A to E conversion and was aware that the the updated version of the Drumit 5 module had been released sounded very interesting um, particularly the multi trigger interface which in theory allows any sorts of pads or symbols uh, to be used successfully with this module uh, lots of new drum sounds as well, so I bought myself a two box Trumit 5 Mark II module and set about converting my old Mapex acoustic kit. The method I used again was exactly the same, the triggers exactly the same design and again I've got absolutely fantastic results which I'm really pleased with. and. The purpose of this video really is to just demonstrate exactly what I did and it may provide a point to, to you if you're thinking about doing something similar and maybe want to try this method. Uh, hopefully the videos I'm going to show you will be clear and allow you to go ahead and give it a go.
Okay, so I'm going to talk about the components which you're going to need. Firstly, the Piazzo sensor. This one's 27 millimeters in diameter, which is the most common size, and it works really well. You're then going to need some foam, and it has to be a certain type of foam in my experience. This is closed cell neoprene foam, about 12 millimeters or half an inch in diameter from an exercise mat. And what you need is a disc of foam about the same size as the piezo. So I've got a bit of copper piping here, which I've sharpened on the edge with a file and with a little bit of pressure and rotation, it's fairly easy to end up with a disc of foam which looks something similar to this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now this disc needs to be modified for the design of this trigger. And it's this is done by removing a small section of foam, as can be seen here, about 90 degrees and about two millimeters in depth. And the reason for this is to allow some clearance for the wires which come away from the piezo. If you didn't do this, then when it's in position, there would be a pressure point where that part of the foam is being pressed on by the wires, which you don't really want. The next piece of material is an L bracket. This is to attach the sensor or the trigger to the drum shell. Now, this hole is elongated to allow adjustment so that when it's finally fitted, we can make sure that the height of the trigger is exactly right. In addition, you're going to need a small piece of material like this. This is aluminium strip, and it's just a little bit wider than the foam disc, and the sensor will be mounted on this piece of aluminium. If you're doing double trig a double trigger setup with a rim sensor, then another L bracket's necessary. This is one I've made with a larger area for the piezo to attach, but you can use a L bracket which is narrow all the way. It will still work well. And finally, a stereo jack socket which will go through the drums, drum shell and to which all the wires will be soldered so that we get the right signal routing. So that's everything. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the assembly of the triggers. So the first thing we're going to do is attach some double-sided tape to both ends of the foam disc, which you've made earlier. And as you can see on the end where there's the cutout, this needs to be done in two parts. Remove the backing paper and then taking care to line up the cutout with the wires on the piezo. Just simply stick the piece of foam directly onto the face of the piezo sensor and gently push it down. Okay, so that's the first part. And then we're going to stick the other end onto the aluminium strip. As you can see, I forgot to re prepare it. It was quite tricky to remove. And this is simply attached fairly centrally on the piece of aluminium. The one thing I would recommend is that you make sure that the direction of the wires is to one side of this strip rather than to either end. This is simply so the cable has a, a better 
route and it avoids any tension problems at a later stage. So that's the first part of the assembly and now we need to attach the aluminium strip onto the L bracket. So for this I'm using a piece of this double sided foam tape. All you need to do is cut a small piece of this just the right width to fit on the top of the L bracket. Remove the backing strip and simply stick it to the underside of the aluminium. And that is that. The internal rim sensor is attached in a very similar way. The only exception being that there isn't any soft foam in this assembly. The piezo is attached with double sided tape directly to the L bracket. And as I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to use a narrow L bracket, which is wider, sorry, narrower than the piezo itself, that is absolutely fine and in my experience works just as well. I'm now going to talk about wiring the triggers. With Toolbox the convention is that the red wire from the head trigger goes to the tip, the red wire from the rim trigger goes to the ring and both black wires go to the sleeve connection. So here is a schematic setup. This is the head trigger And as you can see, the red wire is connected to the tip connection on the stereo jack socket. That's the one that's furthest away from the end that you put the jack plug in. The rim trigger red wire goes to the ring connection which is the middle one and both black wires go to the sleeve connection in a real setup of course all these wires would be much longer and it's possible to make a sort of a secondary connection in between them which makes it easier just here's another diagram just to confirm the wiring setup. So we'll now talk about trigger installation. Here you can see one of my drums and this is the head trigger attached to one of the lug screws using the L bracket and the wires are hidden under some duct tape and on the other side of the drum is the rim trigger the rim trigger can be set vertically like that or horizontally it doesn't really make, make any difference it still functions well and with it, this design it is necessary unless you're using a mesh resonant head to have some sort of dampening in the bottom otherwise you'll get double triggering this is just showing the compression of the foam underneath the piazzo and I'm now trying to show how high it is above the bearing edge. Generally my setup is about one to two millimeters above. I think the foam does allow quite a bit of uh, flexibility and tolerance and I think you'd be perfectly okay if it was say three millimeters above. The important thing is it has to be above because the brass is in direct contact with the mesh head. Here's the stereo jack socket going through the shell and all the wires are soldered on in the way I've described. 
the head is fitted in the normal way and there you can see the head piezo directly underneath the mesh the drum heads I use are Joe Becky prestige mesh heads and in my opinion they are absolutely fantastic mesh heads the best ones I've found the tension fairly tight I would say about the no tension of a normal snare drum and here you can hear a little bit of acoustic sound as the drumstick drops onto them this one on my snare is a three ply head there's possibly a marginal drop in sensitivity compared to the two ply heads but not as much as you'd probably notice and it still functions perfectly well as you will see later and the feel is very close I would say to an acoustic drum head so now we're going to go into the how the triggers actually perform and all the sounds you will hear are from the module there are no acoustic sounds at all I think you can see the sensitivity is pretty good. I can understand there might be some anxiety about wear on the mesh head because it's in direct contact with a piece of brass. Well here you can see this is the underside of my snare drum head which has been in play for eight or nine months and you can see a little mark but close up there is really no wear whatsoever this is how I've done my bass drum you can see the piezo is actually below the contact point of the pedal it's about 13 centimeters and behind the contact point there is some foam to deaden the stroke and it minimizes double triggering so it's about 13 14 centimeters below here's the piazzo same principle as the other drums but because of the size of the bass drum I've built a framework out of some 15 millimeter section aluminium tube not too difficult to make it's just a hacksaw and a drill and there's a, a platform with the foam on for the place where the pedal hits and then the wiring is just a to the tip of the jack socket and the sleeve here are some other little bits which I've made this is a rotation stopper so I could use my Roland CY5 on a normal cymbal stand you can see it's just a, a sleeve of stainless steel with some small bits of stainless steel wire and this is a, a mini bass drum trigger which is a blatant copy of the Roland design 
some hard rubber there and a piezo hidden within the plastic shell. Very sensitive. Reasonably dynamic. So not my design. These are the setups of my kit. This is my acoustic look setup. Apologies for the uh, arty video. Here you can see that's a single 10 inch tom and two 12 inch toms which I made out of one 12 by 12 floor tom and just cut it down in half. They're hanging off a normal cymbal stand and that's the original snare drum I made. I have actually made a different one with a 13 inch Mapex Black Panther, that's the one which is seen earlier in the video. And this is uh, another setup which is a more compact setup all fitting on a single cymbal stand plus the hi-hat stand and the snare drum stand of course. Uh, a couple of Yamaha rubber pads and the Black Panther 13 inch snare drum. So there you have it, that's, that's my video. Um, I hope if you've watched this far that you've found it interesting. I hope it's given you information which would allow you to go and do a similar conversion with your own module and kit. As you can see, it's not difficult. There's not a huge cash outlay. All the components are inexpensive and you can't really go wrong to be honest there's nothing to be lost by giving it a try um, it is an alternative to the other trigger methods which are out there in my view it's an easy one if you, in my view there's also lots of advantages to it uh, particularly the isolation from the drum shell because of the foam uh, if you have any questions please ask them in the comments below and I will endeavour to answer them as quickly as I can. Uh, I may do some other videos uh, around this subject showing some other aspects of, of my conversion um, but I thought the, the, the trigger was the main uh, thing that people would be interested in and uh, I hope you found it worthwhile.